Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to install VirtualBain on VirtualBox using Ubuntu 18.04 and I already have a copy of Ubuntu 18.04 and VirtualBox installed on my system if you don't, you can download all that stuff from the official website which is virtualbox.org and ubuntu.com and I will leave you the links inside the description of the video now we can go to new this is virtual box dashboard you can press machine new and the name is the name of the machine that you want to install we need if we type ubuntu the other files will be prepopulated and then we can say we are 12 min uh, just choose name that you can remember in the future and the version is 64 bit and the type is linux but there are other types that you can install like microsoft bsd and other uh, different versions we press next and then we are asked to choose how much memory we want to assign to this virtual machine i'm going to choose two megabyte two gigabyte two giga and the hard drive is going to be a virtual disk and we create that and we leave everything to the default and we dynamically allocate this space so it's not going to waste all our hard drive and the file location is fine and we can create that and you see there is a new item here on the list of virtual machines and by pressing settings we can now tell the machine what kind of operative system we want to install on it so we go to storage controller AD and we set the optical drive and since I already have installation uh, the load disk of Ubuntu we can just press here otherwise you can check here and go to your download folder and install anything that you want from the files that you have downloaded before okay check that and then we can go to the setting we don't need a floppy disk because nobody uses it anymore I think well someone might be still using that stuff then we can change how many processor we want to use for this uh, virtual main software which is a hosting software that we can install on our virtual machine to have a kind of a hosting company so if we are about to start your own hosting company and you want to uh, have your own on-premise server with your system you can use this this is open source and it's free i'm gonna leave everything else same except the NAT network which I'm going to set to bridge bridge adapter okay now if we press start the virtual machine it's going to install the software for us I mean it's going to start the installation of Ubuntu 18.04 and let's see how it looks like we don't care about this error message just now we just skip them and let's do that this is gonna take some time I'm gonna press stop for the video and come back as soon as it finish during the installation process now we can set up the language English is fine we can set up the keyboard layout which is 
in my case English UK and press done. I'm moving up and down using the arrows keyboard on the keyboard and I want to install Ubuntu and I can leave everything else the same. I have no proxy and I'm fine with that and I want to use the entire disk for the installation of this Ubuntu operating system which is a fresh installation because it's a requirement to install Betonin and then we choose the entire disk it's done we let the system do the partition for us and here we set up our profile you type my, your name i type mine and um, what kind of name you want to give to the server and um, i'm gonna say virtual man and then I'll pick up username which is my username fabio uh, and password this is pass password password um, confirm your password and then you press done using the end keyboard I'm not gonna use anything else it's fresh installation I don't want the open SSH server for now I don't want anything of that and press enter and, and it's done we wait for a while and then our Ubuntu 18.04 will be up and running on our virtual machine. Next, we're gonna need to install the actual software for the hosting system. This is gonna take a while, so I might press stop and come back later as soon as it finish See. the installation is now complete and we can reboot the system pressing enter and off we go this please remove the installation menu and just press enter and the width box can do the clear now Ubuntu is loading type our username and the password and now we should download the installation file and looking at my notes this wget http Um, slash slash software virtual main dot com the GPL which is the free software scripts then install .sh and that's gonna download for us to forward sorry our git but and uh, and you see you see the file that we need to run for the installation is here and it's install.sh to install the virtual main software we just need to do sudo and it's in bin sh and install.sh which is the file that we need to run and we press enter it's gonna ask you your password and you can just type your password the one you just chose um, this is the welcome screen for screen for the installation script and this is gonna remind you that it needs a fresh installed uh, over the system for one of the supported inside this list which is CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu and we can just 
CS. If you want more information about the installation script, you can just run it with the add flag. I'm going to show you that now. I'm going to press Ctrl C to abort. Uh, no, no, it doesn't let me abort. Okay, that's going to set up that. Uh, he wants a fully qualified domain. I'm going to type ns1 dot virtual fab dot they have it doesn't for now just for demo purposes so I'm gonna move forward with this solution here we are the software is still installing and now it's installing the lamp stack we are in phase two of three of the installation script you won't see these two errors if you have done everything correctly but I just screw up to try to the installation process in the meantime to show you the different information that you can get from the add flag of the installation script but you don't need to do that stop the video and come back when it finish okay the installation is almost complete uh, we are on phase three the configuration where uh, the system is gonna configure a lot of nice tools like have AWS stats Apache and firewall D MySQL, NetP, and Spam Assassin, Shells, and a lot of different stuff. And the installation is now complete. Um, if there were no errors uh, above, there should be everything ready. And the our configuration and dashboard should be available at https ns1 virtualfab.f but this is a fake domain and so I'm going to use my IP address which is 19.2.168.0.15 on port 10,000 let's see what we get uh, it's 9 fifteen for ten thousand and that should be ready to go. Might take a while. the first time is my it might take a while because it's going what is going to do it's going to do all the settings to prepare the dashboard I guess also the first time it took a while uh, 
the sun up right, it will cry a long time. And I'm really impatient. Not gonna let me do that. Let me just go to the unsafe side. And here we go. The web main is ready. And uh, I might have forgot the username and password for that. And uh, let me check if there is. Yes, the first time uh, your password is going to be root and root. No. No. Ah, yes, it's the, the password is the password of your Ubuntu system. So in my case, there was five and password that I'm using for demo purposes. And this is the main dashboard that we can use to start our own hosting company. I'm not going to show you how to use it in this video. Um, it's pretty much everything I wanted to show you. Let's just can create a little server. Okay, this is the real main settings. You can check anything of this and see what's inside. And you can create a server and that's it. It's gonna load the nice I don't want the notifications, it's gonna ring and say, you see, you have all your dashboard where it tells you the cheap CPU load, the real memory, the real memory, and all a bunch of different stuff that you can go through one by one. You have different packages, and now the different things that your Ubuntu system is not, uh, you won't be required to update your Ubuntu system from uh, the Ubuntu command line but instead you simply use this dashboard and the administration panel so you can check the status of the system and uh, see what different packages you need to update and you can create different plans, monitor the brand weight, and add features, and a bunch of stuff really. You can do pretty much everything you would expect from a, an hosting server. And in here, in the build domain, we'll have some notification. Slow because as you see, I gave the I gave to the virtual machine all the type of RAM and all the two CPU core. Uh, the minimum requirement, anyway, is one gigabyte of RAM, and obviously a fresh installation of uh, of the operating system where you want to run it. Um, that yes, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can check the recent logins, software version. You see, I'm running Ubuntu 18.04.2. Uh, there are no beta server. The server status is fine, is everything is up and running. And you can uh, go to your uh, Let's the dashboard is where we are now. You can check the backup configuration if you want, but this is useless at the moment because everything is empty. Then, uh, well, the virtual main, this one is the one where you can 
have all the different information and settings for the system and here the other tab is where you have all the different information for your hosting company so you want to add a new server you just click here and add a new server if you want to import a virtual server you can import a virtual server from here and you can migrate a virtual server so if you have a file with all the information of a virtual server let's try to make actually a first server is if from here you can see the list of the server that you have we have none the dashboard is really really big so it might take you a while to learn and remember where everything is, is. I'm not gonna waste any more time at the moment, I'll just show you a little bit around. I don't remember actually where are the different settings for the okay here create the virtual server. And here we can update the system. So virtual main Let's you create your different accounts for your company. So for each customer, you want to give them an account with the server, a virtual server. You see here we have packages updates, 89 packages to update, which 23 are security updates. If we click here, we should be redirected to the system. And yes, we are. Um, that's very nice. It show you how uh, what packages are about to be updated, and the version, and the description of the package and the source of the package, and they tell you if it's a security update or if and the, any kind of update, different kind. Um, we can just update here and click update select packages and that gonna do the same thing that you would do by doing uh, sudo apt get up and apt get upgrade in case you want to upgrade system and libraries and then a bit in list is complete and then we are ready to Install these new packages. This is not required to make your own, uh, your first uh, virtual server to create your first virtual. Server. However, I want to show you how to do that because keep your system uh, healthy means doing your updates frequently and most importantly doing your security update. Basically, if your server is a virtual server which hosts different websites and software for different clients. I'm not gonna use, I haven't used this in production, I use a classic hosting system from my hosting company which uses a cPanel uh, I just wanted to experiment with that and see how it look like having a hosting company there's quite a lot of things to manage and you probably need a team of course you do because I mean you need four customers and most important you need to make sure your system is always up and running to guarantee uh, enough time at least 99% of the time to your customer you don't want your server to be down 
for maintenance and all your all these websites that you all are to be down because your customers will be not happy with that. When it finish I'm gonna show you if we have enough time, yes we do. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to create your favorite server. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I tried and I forgot to record. I was half away. I'm gonna stop the video and come back later when I finish. Okay, the update installation is complete and the system is asking to reboot the software and just reboot it now. Um, just wait for the system to come back online after the reboot. You can see what it's doing from your virtual machine, from your virtual box. Window, you see that it's restarting the server and it's asking again for logging and password, but we don't need to do that. Ready to start again. I might ask you a password again. Um, take a while. Again, this is because the resources for this virtual machine are very low. I mean, just a couple of gig of RAM and CPU is. That's how we build our first. So we have the main name, which should be the name your website. So you buy your domain from a domain hosting company, a domain register, sorry. And from there, you got your domain, like say, domain is.dev. And the description, my call, our website, the, the administrator password here, we can just type it in. Password for demo. So we can just leave everything as it is. We don't have any plan uh, because we didn't make any. Uh, we can make a plan, different plan for different kind of packages that we want to sell different hostings packages so depending on how much resources you want to allocate to each account you set up a different package then username can be automatic or can be custom name if you choose a custom name you need to type it so okay in this case it's gonna be Bob Contact email address. Uh, yeah, you can just play with it and set all the different things that you need to make it work. And as soon as it's happy, just leave everything as it is. Then, well, you can also change the settings that you configure here later and it's failed to create it's 
Yes, of course, so that's my username, so it failed. So let's say a different username, which is Fabio. And let's see. It's now it's not going to fail. So fail. Now creating this virtual server for us and fail again. Yes, of course, it's failing. We don't have any uh, fully qualified hosting name and just that a virtual IP address same as the real IP address. I have no clue what this point. Mm, I've already done that before, I just can't remember. Failed. Yes, of course, it didn't type any IP address. Right, so with IP address 19. I want this to be the shared IP address, the one to use another one. Bloody bastard. Yes, that's doing the job. Fine. Uh, and this is how we start building your uh, server account, performing all the Apache configuration, installing the user inside the www data for the group, adding the web server to the group. And then setting up the B virus for filters and password uh, for a BAW test and restarting the DNS server. And that's done. Now we can just press return to virtual list. Our first server for our first domain, domain is complete. That's gonna ask you what you want to do to uh, to do different um, purchases for your virtual server, your main system. Gonna leave everything as it is for now, just to show you quickly. And yeah. wizard that you are required to take and yes leave default if you just want to overview and then yeah it's 
can ask you if it means support both MariaDB as MySQL and PostgreSQL database servers, but you might want to run only one or eight or neither on your system. Each consumes RAM when running, even if they are not behind you. Depending on the website and application you plan to host, running MariaDB and MySQL only may be enough and we want to use Maria and MySQL and as I said we can leave to the default but if you need the Postgres SQL database server you just want to use that as well or use together you can do that to prevent the user to access your database that's your password gonna use type so I remember and password. <laughs> you know you don't wanna use that information, it's bad. Nobody uses password unless you are running some demo. And MariaDB and MySQL can be configured to trade off memory uh, use for performance depending on uh, how much RAM your system has and how heavily you expect the database to be used. For now, I leave the default settings because this is just a demo, not planning to use it in real world for now, just playing around. And the primary server, let's keep check the results. Okay, for DNS, so. Uh, created by Virtumain to be resolved, the primary name server record for each record for each zone must be set to something that can itself be resolved by other system on the internet. Primary name server Virtumain, which is the one I just used earlier as demo, and just skip that because the one anything to be resolved. It's not real main for me. Here, Prisoning gives you the option of storing plain text password for virtual servers and mailboxes or storing only one way encrypted hash passwords. Plain text passwords are more convenient but less secure if your system is compromised. Well, that's a really nice point. Should you use the uh, encrypted one or the plain text. I would say you should use the uh, encrypt password because uh, it's more secure as it, as it says if your system got compromised you really don't want anybody to know your password but as it seems for me that's just a demo and um, I don't care honestly the passwords nobody can compromise that so it's fine as it is it's plain and now the installation wizard is complete we can click next that doesn't have anything to do with the virtual server that we created earlier that's the virtual configuration to optimize the configuration for the entire system no no okay we don't care about that where is the server list okay here inside this okay that's the list of the things that you install on your new server and by default this is all available to you uh, we have WordPress 5.0 uh, WHMSC which is only one client management building and support and um, the mail uh, package and run cube another mail uh, package and PHP my admin uh, which is a web based uh, 
uh, MySQL database interface for managing your database and yeah you can let's say you can click here and install your new uh, business server that's gonna what's gonna happen now is that your uh, uh, is gonna install uh, a copy of WordPress 5.0 inside your new domain fast.dev which is the one I'm using for uh, just for this demo um, yeah and it's type if you click install now and this is going to install wordpress for us i'm going to show you where wordpress is going to be stored after that for each account if you check what is installing if you log in inside your virtual machine and you type ls that's empty but if you go on your home sorry yes somewhere here there should be a folder for your for, for my fab dev installation when it's complete um, yes if you go around it should be just simple just here okay if you go in your home directory and check what's inside you see there are two different folders um, one is fabio and the other one is fab if you type the one which is named fab you go back because it's the main account it's fab at this main uh, which is your system folder but if you go again your home directory and you type Fabio, which is the one, which is the username that we have uh, chosen to use for our virtual server fab.dev, uh, that's gonna give you. Huh. Of course, you don't have any permission for that, but you type sudo. I just want to check that. Type your password. I'm gonna be using a root user and then go inside Fabio and inside Fabio as you see there are all these uh, files and folders that your virtual system the virtual main system has created for you and <coughs> now by uh, clicking inside your public HTML folder you will see that there are other folders which is your stats folder as well as your wordpress main folder uh, if you check your wordpress directory and there uh, will be stored all the wordpress files for your users now uh, that's pretty much it if you want to 
have another user inside that home folder you will see another user for each user and for each virtual account virtual server that you're gonna make you will have a different folder inside your Ubuntu system well that's pretty much everything for today thanks for watching this video and cheers